So let me just try and give you what I call is like a, a beautiful like a skeleton of how your calculus really looks so that you know what is actually important for you and what do you really need to stress about. So calculus, right, calculus, which some of this might not really be um, necessary for you, but it's just going to help you to understand where you are and what exactly the story is here. So calculus can be thought of or can be divided into two uh, portions to be exact, right? It is um, differential calculus, right? There is what we call differential calculus. This is basically uh, a summary of what you've seen before, what you've worked with, and if you are new, it is going to be good for you because it will help you to understand what the hell is happening with differential calculus, right? So calculus can be separated into differential calculus. It can also be separated to what we call integral calculus, right? So these are the two basic ideas that are under this topic of calculus, right? Now, the second one of integral calculus is something that you guys do not need to worry about. So this part here is actually something that you don't need to worry about because it is what you will be working with when you go to uh, university and colleges. It's what I call grade 13 as far as math is concerned because in math, we don't have new concepts. We just expand on what you've been learning from your previous grades. So intra, uh, um, integral calculus is not something that you're going to worry about in grade 12. It is something that you'll start worrying about when you go to uh, post high school education because this is specifically for post um, high school, right? Unless if you are doing AP Meds, then you might want to worry about integration and those kinds of concepts. So for you, my beautiful people, the only thing that you need to stress about is what we call differential calculus, right? Now you're probably wondering, what is under this differential calculus that I need to understand for me to claim that I've got a full understanding of calculus, right? Because I want you to see where we are as we attempt to answer the questions that you sent to us so that you can see where are we in our attempt of covering the whole concept of calculus? The first thing that you need to understand in calculus is the concept of limits, right? Now, in limits, no one is going to ask you in the context of your exams, as far as the CAPS documents are concerned, to answer limit questions explicitly. We won't examine you on limits, right? But we are going to ask you questions that involve the application of the whole concept of limits, right? We won't ask you to answer questions that specifically talk about limits, but we are going to ask you the application of the concept of limits. And where do you apply this whole concept of limits? You apply that when you're working things that we call differentiations or when you're working for uh, looking for the derivatives, right? So that is basically where the whole application of limits comes in. So we're gonna ask you to work out um, derivatives, right? And when you work out derivatives, there are um, different uh, methods you can obviously use in order to try and work out the derivatives. The first one that I want to draw to your attention is what you looked at last week, which is the whole thing of finding derivatives uh, from first principles, right? This is by definition from um, first principles. So this is actually a skeleton of your calculus. If you've got a pen and paper and you're at home, you might want to write this down because it actually gives you a good idea of how far your work is going to go as far as calculus is concerned, right? So this is uh, the first thing that you need to know as far as derivatives are concerned. When people ask you to find the derivatives from first principles, the key word there is first principles. It is also known as finding the derivatives by definition. So when people start asking you to find stuff uh, such as this by definition, then they're referring to using the concept of the first principles to find the derivatives. And I see some of your questions involve this, right? The next thing that you'll need to worry about is finding the derivatives using what I call rules, right? Using um, rules or shortcuts. There are techniques that we have developed. We are mathematicians. We pride ourselves with laziness. So we come up with shortcuts to try and find solutions to these problems without uh, using the long methods because we want to get to the answers quicker. Right. So the, those rules include rules such as um, the power rule. Right. I'm sure you guys have probably seen this if you've worked with calculus before. There's something that is called the product rule. Right. There's something that is called the quotient rule and there's something that is also called um, the chain rule. Now the good news uh, is that you don't have to worry about all these other rules. You don't have to worry about the product rule, the quotient rule and the chain rule because once more that is for post high school education. Uh, or for those of you guys who are doing AP Meds. AP Meds learners might be interested because I saw some of you were asking questions about meeting uh, AP Meds and whether we'll have programs on AP Meds. So these are the ones that you would use if you are an AP Meds learner or if you're just doing 
uh, calculus beyond high school because calculus will follow you irrespective of whether you're doing engineering or you're doing medicine or you're doing commerce um, qualifications. Anything that is post high school that involves math, you're most certainly going to see calculus following you. All right. Now, the last thing that is involved in this skeleton of differential calculus is applications of calculus. I want you to know where you are when I'm answering questions that you're sending to me. So applications of calculus. And these I can group into three, right? The first one is applications that involve functions or graphs, right? Functions or graphs, right? Such as um, the cubic graph, which you sent a lot of questions on, which we're going to look at. Uh, something that is also involved that involves graphs and the calculus applications is what we call um, derivative graphs, like the derivative functions or the derivative graphs. Um, and the other one that I also want to draw to your attention is the tangents to uh, these graphs. Very important basics that are necessary in order for you to understand where you are. And if you can't do any of these things, it means your knowledge of differential calculus is missing, right? We need to make sure that you are able to do all these things that you guys see here. Beautiful stuff, right? Now, the other application concepts that you'll need to worry about is what we call optimization problems, right? Optimization. Now, if you've wondered as a matriculant whether you will be tested on measurements, volume and surface area, those kinds of concepts, well, this is where we actually ask you to maximize stuff, right? So your knowledge of measurements from grade 11 and grade 10 applies here, where we ask you to either maximize volume or to minimize surface area and those kinds of things. Uh, we ask them here under differential calculus. It's not, um, they are, it's not a must, right? But we do definitely also add these kinds of questions when you're trying to optimize. For those uh, educators who are watching, this is the um, concept that involves what we call, uh, it used to be what we call linear programming a long time ago before it was phased out as we were introducing CAPS. And during those days it was called linear programming, but now we are actually taking it and using the whole concept under differential calculus under the concept of optimization, right? And the last thing here is what we call a rate of change, right? There's gonna be a rate of change questions where we are going to use calculus to deal with rate of change questions. Now, a lot of scientists have been complaining, like science learners have been complaining that financial mathematics is specifically for uh, learners who are doing commerce. So if you're an accounting learner, you benefit when we get to financial math. Well, guess what? When we get to rate of change, uh, accountants and those kids who are doing ECOS will need to uh, learn some um, terminology that involves science as well. So you guys who are doing accounting and you guys who are doing business studies and you guys who are doing uh, ECOS, if you are doing pure math, you are going to definitely need to also get used to some of the lingo that they use in science, such as displacement, velocity, as well as acceleration. So those are the rates of change questions. They're not limited to calculus of motion. That is what I call calculus of motion. Also going to find rate of change, maybe of flow of water out of the tank or those kinds of things. So all those are concepts that involve the application of calculus. So I just want to add here on the notes that we have that your rate of change might involve calculus of motion and it will be uh, very important for you to get used to this. And educators sometimes ignore this because they think it's specifically for science learners, so it's unfair for you if you're doing commerce. Well, it's not. It's mathematics. It's not really about science. It's mathematics. It's just that the concept applies uh, in the world of scientists, right? So calculus of motion and other types of rates of change questions are also going to be part of the things that we're going to examine you about. Okay, cool. So what you're looking at here is just a summary of all the concepts that you need to know that are under calculus. Calculus can be integral, can be differential. You guys are doing differential calculus. You're not doing integral calculus. That's the only calculus you need to worry about. So you need to know how to work with limits. You need to know how to work with derivatives and you can get them in two forms. You always get them in two forms. They'll ask you to find a derivative from first principle and then they'll ask you to use your rules. They won't say anything, they'll just say, derive the following and they won't tell you whether to use the first principle concept or not, then under those conditions, you then need to use the power rule because it's quicker and it gets you to the point. The last thing we're going to worry about is applying these ideas of calculus to solve problems, which uh, can be found in graphs. We can now be able to draw graphs we couldn't draw before with the math that we had. And we'll deal with optimization questions as well as uh, rate of change questions. This is where a lot of people start struggling, right? So now I'm gonna start with the questions that you guys sent to us and. The first one I'm going to look at now for this segment is a question that was sent to us by Buiti. And Buiti's question reads as follows. It says, given f of x is 3 minus 2x squared, right? So we are given a quadratic function. 
and it requires us, it says, determine f prime of x using first principles. And it says five marks. Eh? Now, you guys have to respect examiners. Examiners take um, people who ignore their instructions very personal, right? So you don't want to find yourself on the best side of those people. When they say use the first principle, you need to use the first principle. The other way of phrasing that question is they could have said um, by definition. So by definition, from first principle for five marks, that tells you there's a lot of work that you need to engage when you're solving this problem. Remember, in your high school work, you are writing a three-hour paper, right, for um, 150 marks. That means it is for every mark you need to spend one minute and 12 seconds, right? So if I give you five, five marks, I'm expecting you to spend um, five minutes to six minutes in total, literally six minutes solving that problem. So you can't just do a one-line solution to get five marks. So be careful, check mark allocation. It also guides you to tell you how much effort is demanded out of you, right?